Welcome to Mainstream Moto. I'm Mike. Today we're going to be reviewing the G-Max GM11D. Uh, I've had this helmet for four months now and uh, I have to say I'm quite happy with it. I put quite a few miles on it so far. Quite comfortable for, for me anyway. Um, everyone's head is different so I mean hopefully <laughs> maybe I just have a funky shaped head or something. I don't know. When you order the helmet, you get pretty much everything that you see here, uh, except the tinted lens. You get the clear lens instead of this tinted lens. The visor is removable, and I usually have it off because I haven't found a, a very good use for it. Some people say that you can block the sun with it a little bit, um, but I, when I have the helmet on, I can see maybe maybe an inch of this and so I haven't found it that useful for that. I don't usually ride with it on there, so we're gonna take it off. This is how I prefer it. And for those of you that are wondering, does it look as good as it does in the pictures when you actually get it out of the box? It does, <laughs> in my opinion. If you don't like the way it looks, you know, that's fine. But if you think this looks cool, you get it home, it, it looks it looks good. Not disappointed there. So, this is the way that I've been riding with it. Um, I've done a 400 mile day with this, and I did not have a headache. I did not have any, any you know, neck cramping or anything. It's a pretty lightweight helmet, which is, which is pretty easy on you. The size... Uh, seems to run, is it a little big? I usually wear a medium and this is a large and it fits me pretty good so I always get my sizing charts kind of mixed up but uh, this is a large, fits me really well I usually wear a medium so keep that in mind if you order one. One of the complaints that people have about this helmet is the strap they say it's more like a choke collar and it is a little bit far back so if you do tighten it up you know real tight it does kind of push on your neck a little bit not bad if you don't tighten it up a lot uh, you know you always want to make sure that it's tightened up enough but just don't cinch it down on your throat and you'll be fine I think I paid I paid a hundred and seven dollars for this I believe and uh, I'll tell you right now if this ever got lost or stolen, I don't know why someone would steal it, but if this ever got lost or stolen or damaged or, or whatever to where I couldn't use this helmet, I, I wouldn't think twice to, to just go on and buy another one right on the spot. As soon as, as soon as I could do it, I would just buy another one of these helmets because, because for $107, uh, it's, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. Another thing I've noticed in some other videos that I've seen of this helmet is it seems like the uh, the helmet is a little small for the person who's wearing it. Uh, they put it on and it looks like it's sitting really tall and like this big huge big huge helmet on top of their head. But I think it's because they have a, a too small of a size. You can see here how it fits on me. This fits on me really really well uh, as far as comfortability. And you can see that the top of this, I think you can see it, the top of this is just above my eyebrows. And some of the other videos that I've seen, I mean, it looks like it's up here. And, uh, you know, this looks stupid. This looks really stupid. Another really neat thing about this helmet is that you can actually get quite a few accessories for it. Um, I don't have all of the accessories. These are the ones that I have. I don't have the ones like the uh, the electric, the winter kit. I don't have that one. Uh, I live in Montana and I try to, to ride year round. If the roads are dry, I'm going to try to get a ride in. And so there were a few that I was personally interested in. And so let's just talk about them for a second here. So you have a few different lens options. You have just your standard clear lens. This is what the helmet comes with. You have a tinted um, single-layered lens. You've got a high-vis 
or HD, I don't know which one you call it, high vis I think. You also have a dual lens clear and then this one that's on the helmet, uh, the dual lens uh, tinted. There's also a uh, chin skirt that's got kind of a, you know, it breathes pretty well. And then there's a winter chin skirt that doesn't have any holes in it. And then you've got the breath box that slides right inside the helmet. I'll show you how to put that in there. Those are all the ones that I have. Uh, like I said, there's there's another uh, winter kit or cold weather kit where, where this actually is heated. Uh, but I didn't think I would be riding in that cold of weather. But if you're going to use it for snowmobiling or something, uh, you might be interested in something like that. So just real quick, uh, I'm just going to kind of put the accessories that I have kind of in the order that, that I would put them in priority. So if I was to buy this helmet again, I would not buy all of this. Um, but I'll show you which ones I would buy. Um, so top of the list, priority. This clear lens right here, it comes with the helmet. This is fine. This, I think, is, is the mo one of the most useful lenses. Um, if you want one upgrade more than that, since you don't actually have to buy this one, <laughs> if you do want to buy another lens, the dual clear is the one that I would recommend. If you only have enough money to buy the helmet and you want to just do one better lens, do the dual clear lens because you can always put sunglasses underneath if it starts getting sunny out if it starts raining uh, this won't fog up on you then these will not fog up you can you breathe till you pass out trying to make them fog up I have used these dual lenses down to about 10 degrees Fahrenheit I've ridden with them in the rain like heavy rain they do not fog up so if you're looking for a lens that won't, uh, these are great. If it's raining, you can use this. If it's cold, you can use this. Uh, very versatile. <clears throat> if you're going to do another one, I would recommend the dual tinted. Uh, because you can change that out and, and it's just kind of nicer to have the whole shield. Uh, plus, it looks nice. It looks really good. This one, <clears throat> I would not buy this one. If I was going to buy the tinted lens, I would just buy the dual lens. That You do whatever you want. <laughs> but this one, this one will fog up in colder weather. You hit some rain, this will still fog up. This will work good if you're in really sunny weather, nice and dry. Um, but this does not work any better than this in those types of conditions anyway. This one here, this looks really, really cool, and it sounds, the concept to me was very neat. I really liked the idea of being able to make everything a little bit more defined, but you know what this one does? It makes everything orange. That's it. It just makes everything orange. I guess it might work for some people. Um, it, it does seem to make a slight difference for me if it's cloudy. But the downside to that is if it's going to be cloudy, you're probably going to have a little bit more humidity. And this does not come in a dual lens, at least not up to today. If you were to put a pin lock in this, then you might have something. If someone wanted to experiment with that, you might have something then. But you don't want to be stuck riding at night with this because it does make everything that much darker. Uh, you're going to want a clear lens for riding at night. This is a really nice accessory and uh, I wear this in the cold. I wear this with a uh, climb balaclava. Um, and so this, this actually complements this very, very well. This really tends to keep a lot of the cold air from coming up under the helmet and getting around your eyes where it's exposed. This goes over my mouth so it can get all the wind it, it wants. It, does, it doesn't get cold. Uh, so this is actually a really nice little accessory. 
and it, it's got a little metal piece inside the nose so you can form fit it to your, to your personal nose. All you have to do is undo those front buttons on the front of the cheek pads. Take your breath box, fold it and drop it in through the bottom. And then you put the pads, snap the pads back on through the holes in the breath box. There it is. I would recommend this. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm glad I got this. So if I was to buy this helmet again, everything, everything here was gone. I was going to buy this helmet again. I would buy the helmet. It would come with a clear lens. I would buy a dual clear lens. I would buy the dual uh, smoke lens. I would buy this. I would not buy these. I would not buy this. And I wouldn't buy this because this is better. So this is what I would buy. There are a couple things about this helmet that I don't like, and we'll just get those out of the way. My biggest complaint is these screws that you screw on the visor with. If you change out your visor a lot, you're going to hate this, because I do. These screws, they look like a Phillips. It's unlike any Phillips I've ever seen. This just seems like a little bit more of a downgrade from the helmet I had before, which was also a G-Max. This is the one that I had before, and you didn't have to have any tools to take the lens off of this. And it was actually pretty quick. All you have to do is take this lens off, you push these little tabs down, pops right off. You, you take the lens that you want on there, you push these in here, slide it on, there it is. It's quick. It works. I've never had any issue with this one whatsoever. <clears throat> but this one doesn't do that. Every time you pull over to change your lens out, if it starts to get dark or something and you got to get rid of the smoke screen and put on a clear lens, you got to get a screwdriver out and take these out and don't lose the screws or you're done for. It just seems like a step down. And they're very soft. They're a very soft metal. And they're starting to kind of strip out because there isn't a tool that actually fits that. At the very least, you should have a tool to take this out, a specific tool. But when these do finally go, I'm going to replace them with a bolt that has an Allen head. So that all I have to do is pack an Allen head in my tank bag or something. It's a lot smaller to carry around. Uh, if you were to get replacement screws with this, I believe it's $4.99. Another thing I'm not particularly fond of is these top vents right here. These are kind of hard to grip. These are really smooth. You can see that on the top of this vent right here, there's a small little nub right here. And when you've got gloves on, you can open and close that with ease. But these two on the top, and I think these are the most important ones, they tend to, to really, I mean with sticky fingers, if I have sticky fingers, they seem to work pretty good. But when you've got gloves on, just reaching up and sliding those shut is a job. Not really, it's not that big of a job. But it's one of those things, they could just put like a little button like they've got here on the tips of these. Would have solved all that. And one more thing. If you open this, while you're going down the road, at 65 miles an hour, some for some reason, it shoots. It will shoot air right straight up your nose. Going down the road and, and your nose itches, and you, you're gonna flip your visor up, and you're doing the highway speed, and you're gonna get shot up the nose with a whole bunch of air. It was quite surprising to me, anyway. I don't remember why I opened this up, but anyway. So. Keep it closed. Don't scratch your nose when you pull over or something. I don't know. So anyway, that's my review of the G-Max GM11D. Go buy one.